why is technology so freaking difficult to understand it has like the, the whole uh, streaming thing has baffled me uh ever since i started doing this a little bit over a year ago and um every day i learn something new so for those of you that are um watching and are wondering what the hell i'm talking about it turns out that if you have your microphone set up and in obs on your microphone input you select a different input even though it's the same like microphone it will sound different i'll show you so right now this is me talking with my microphone if i change to the default which should pick my microphone as well check the difference testing testing can you hear it hopefully it can be heard on the video because when i like look at the preview it, it just sounds so so horrible i'm gonna switch There we go. So now I'm selecting the microphone and I'm not sure why it does this. Has to do with something about drivers or something. I don't know. It just drives me crazy. Anyway, welcome back to another video on this channel. Um, I, felt, I felt like it was a good idea to share a little bit of the of the behind the scenes things. I've actually fixed the auto focus as well. Now it's set to manual focus and it should be focusing my beautiful face right now. So today we're going to continue with the weapon. I'm, uh, I'm actually coming from a long uh, morning of uh, working on the project. So I'm going to be using this to de-stress a little bit and, and relax, chill out, uh, just have fun with sculpting. And of course, to show you some cool tips and tricks so that you too can create your own weapon. Remember that we have our competition open uh, and we're going to be announcing the winners as soon as the submissions are finished, which is at the end of the month. Um, if there's any questions about the submissions and stuff like that, I know we haven't released the official place to do that. Don't worry, it'll be up. Uh, we're holding. We don't want anyone to be sniping the submissions or anything. So um, I'll let you guys know as soon as we approach. Keep working on your projects because uh, there's uh, there's uh, I guarantee you this is going to be a tough comp competition. So um, we have this guy right here. This is the, the sword that I'm uh, designing, right? And uh, today I want to focus on this little guy right here, which I know this is very small detail, but a lot of the things that I'm going to be doing with this will be applied to the upper section. And uh, whenever we are um, like, um, let me just play a little bit of my music here. Whenever we are working with this, Elements reference is always important, right? So Kukulkan is the um, is the deity uh, the the Mayans uh, in Mexico. There's there's a lot of cultures or a lot of uh, like tribes and uh, and different yeah cultures uh, from like pre we call it pre Hispanic Mexico, right? Before the the um, Spanish came and uh, conquered the the continent. So um, there were a lot of there are a lot of different cultures. The two most like commonly known are Mayans, um, uh, which are the ones that we're uh, referencing right now. And the other ones are the Aztecs, right? The Aztecs were the ones that met the um, the Spanish like uh, head first and with the ones that they battled the most, I think. Uh, I, I'm not super versed in history, to be honest. Uh, my dad was really good at history. He is really good at history. So anyway, uh, the, the thing that I do know about the Mayan culture is that Kukulkan is one of their deities. It's the winged serpent. And in a similar fashion to like Greek, Greeks and uh, Romans, see how they shared gods. Like you have Zeus and then there's, uh, I think, Jupiter. He's the, he's the uh, Roman equivalent. Um, in Mexico, it happens similarly. Like Mayans have this sort of like a, a specific way to name some of their deities. And then the Aztecs took some of that and they transformed it. That's just how religions evolved yeah, generally. So I'm going to be referencing this guy right here, which looks, which looks very, very cool. And uh, we're going to be working on this one. So we've mentioned before that when working on a small object like this, uh, there's a couple of things that we can do. We can definitely increase the resolution, which is what I'm going to start with. But you can see I'm going to have to go really, really, really high with resolution to, to create something or to get enough uh, like a, a geometry to be working with this. Now, in the Mayan, in the Mayan like uh, architecture, the way they, they like carve their stuff, it's very geometric. Um, I, I think, hopefully I'm not saying <laughs> lies to everyone in the internet, uh, but they were really like science of focus. They didn't call it science, of course, but they, they, they studied a lot of stuff and, um, they were one of the first cultures in the world to come up with the zero as a, as a number, I believe. Um, and as you can see in the patterns, it, it's quite precise and quite, uh, like, uh, geometric, I would say. So that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be going for. I'm going to start with deeming the standard here just to start carving in some of the of the sections and it's going to be the top of the of the snake serpent and then you can see it has like this sort of like spirally thing coming from the from the from under the element and this is one of the things that i wanted to show you sometimes people are really scared of playing around with volumes in inside of uh inside the series 
they, they like to have everything in the same kind of like plane. But I'm going to show you right now how you can create some very interesting things uh, while still preserving that sort of stuff. So, for instance, by using a little bit of clay buildup right here, I'm using both uh, like positive and negative clay buildup. I can create this sort of lip coming from the side of the serpent. And then I can use them in a standard to carve out like a spiral coming from the side, right? Like this. See that? Dynamesh again to, to recreate that area and give, give, our, give ourselves a little bit more polygons. Let me isolate this so we can work on this one a little bit better. And here's where the lazy mouse might be a good idea. So I'm going to go stroke lazy mouse. and I'm going to increase the lazy radius, which is the distance that the lazy mouse is going to be uh, like affecting. And as you can see, now we have that nice little like red line underneath. That one's very important because it allows us to to be a lot more precise on our strokes when creating this sort of elements. So uh, lazy mouse is a really good way to to create these effects. I'm using uh, Damien standard, as you just saw there. But I'm inverting the, um, I'm pressing Alt while doing that so that we get an invert effect on the spiral. And as you can see, what that's going to do is instead of carving in, it's actually carving out. So it's adding like a rich to the whole thing. And then we can even like go here to, to this one and, and do it the other way around so that we can create this very, very nice effect. Now, I don't really care about keeping this like super tight and super clean because it's supposed to be like carved the wood. So I would expect there to be some imperfections. That's one of the things that I always uh, talk about when when the, um, talking about 3D. 3D tends to give us very perfect looking things. And even though that's fine for, for most of the things, like if you're doing products or or some like commercial renders and stuff like that, then yeah, you want things to look as perfect as possible. But for a couple of uh, some of this more traditional looking elements, it is not a bad idea to uh, to play around and, and add some imperfections to the whole thing. I'm going to go with the eyes now. I'm going to keep them a little bit creepier. Like I don't want to go like exactly to the reference in this case. So I'm going to do like some angry eyes here. Still geometric, as you can see right here, we're going to do this sort of like patterns. I am going to turn on the pommel though. So let's. Let's turn everything on except for the pommel so that we know where where this thing is going to stop. I'm actually going to go around the pommel. And this is the thing that not a lot of people, uh, especially um, clients and uh, and the general public, they don't really know about this this whole process. Because when, when I tell my friends or my family, hey, I'm working on this or that, they always think that things are really fast. Like, I just imagine that and uh, it's done. Um, and it's not, not like uh, AI art, right? That you can just uh, prompt something and it will give you an exact model of what you want. Um, we've had that discussion already, by the way. So if you guys want to check out the video I released, uh, it was like a week or so ago. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, AI art. So uh, it takes time. Uh, it takes time. And uh, as, as, the, as the quote says, the devil's on the details. So if we really spend the time on this thing, we're going to be able to create a really nice looking uh, element. I'm trying to find like what would be a nice thing to put here on the front. And I can see that it's sort of like a dragon serpent. So it might not be a bad idea to have like the like the nostrils here. But again, I want to have like some sort of like patterning going because it's very flat right here, right? So, so we can we can try something. Like create again like some sort of pattern. I'm just sketching it right now. Uh, Mayans, in some of their clothing, they, they used to have like a lot of like squarish shapes. I don't see that as much here on this element, but I see like this, see this sort of like S pattern. It's very, very common. I love our, our Mexican culture. We have a lot of very, very cool stuff, to be honest. I know all of the cultures have amazing stuff. Actually, I would love guys, it, it, like most of our audience, uh, you guys I know are from India. Um, I think like 80% of you guys are um, from India. I've always been interested in Indian mythology. Like I'm, I'm sure you guys have uh, some sort of uh, traditions and culture as well regarding that. Can anyone share on the comments like wh what would be a good source or a good place to, to look for that kind of information? Because I know that there's, uh, I'm not sure how many religions there are, but I know that uh, I think in Hinduism, um, there's a lot of different gods. 
So if anyone can point me to some of that information, I would love to learn about your guys' culture as well. So let's go here. So I like this pattern here. I think we're going to go with just a single one. Again, sort of like kind of remind me of feathers. We're going to be adding more detail there as well. And then on the border of the lips, we're going to do kind of like an, an iwana. So uh, is that how you say it in English? Iwana. So iwanas are uh, reptiles, right? Uh, but it's very fun how it happens here in the mouth. See how it has this like very big scales, kind of like lips. So I kind of want to go for that. First, we're going to start with a with a relatively like thick lip. Like that. That's dynamish. Let's actually square off the nose a little bit more. I'm going to use this sort of like, again, geometric looking shape. Train dynamic. To create like the, there we go. That looks good. Like the outer border. Let's, let's very quickly go back to the eyes. I'm just going to. Create the, the cavity for the eyes. I'm actually going to keep it positive like that. I might even set a little bit of more volume there. So it's like a round, round effect. I kind of want to give it like a, like a sharp um, frame, but I'm not sure. This whole thing is going to be an open mouth. We'll talk about this one shortly. Though this, this is where the teeth are going to be. I'm just going to carve in a little bit. I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a second. I'm just carving in where the, the mouth cavity is going to be. Some might be tempted to remove it entirely, like have a, a whole piece right here. But again, if we're talking about carved wood, you wouldn't expect the artisan to cut everything and then glue a couple of, of teeth. So he would like carve the teeth out of that section right there. But again, we'll, we'll jump into that in just a second. Here, I'm just going to go with Trim Dynamic again. There we go. And we're going to push this right here. Give it more volume to the lips. And now let's jump again with Damien Standard. I am going to press L. L is the shortcut for the Lazy Mouse because I want to get rid of the Lazy Mouse so that we can work on this thing a little bit like cleaner. Oh, I like that. Uh, that that happened just like there, that's what I like to call, um, based, of course, on, on Bob Ross, uh, the happy accidents, right? Like every now and then when you're, especially when you're doing something uh, that you don't have a concept or a, a specific reference that you're following, you will encounter certain things that look good, right? So, for instance, that little cut right there, that, that's interesting. It looks geometric. It looks it looks nice, I would say. So so that's good. I'm going to use Train Dynamic with a very big brush to flatten all of that area. And there we go. Uh, we definitely need to increase the resolution, so I'm going to give it a little bit more resolution. We could even turn on polish, to be honest. I, I don't think it's... There we go. I don't think it's going to be as uh, as bad. Now, one thing about polish, um, I do believe polish has a... On the on geometry, dynamesh. Does it have? No, it doesn't. There there was a way uh, that you could like have like a soft polish, but uh, we don't have it right now. The problem with polish is it, it does look good. I mean, it's not bad. But again, it's a little bit too like CG, right? It looks too computerish. So I'm gonna keep it without polish first, and later on, if we need it, we'll we'll add it. I'm gonna go back with my Damien Stander. Again, I'm imagining that I'm like an like an artisan, and I'm working on this piece of wood. So I'm using very traditional tools to create something interesting. I'm gonna add like an eyelid here. I think like a like a geometry geometric eyelid. Might not be a bad idea. And then with Damien Standard again, we'll do the teeth here. Now, uh, one of the problems with Damien Standard is you can see that when we do the uh, the cut or any cut here, um, I'm actually need to turn on Lazy Mouse and I'm going to go back just to decrease the Lazy Mouse radius. There we go. So when we do this, the pit that we create, it's kind of like a round, right? It's it's not like a straight line. It's not like a knife. It's more like a like a dip. Uh, you can change that by changing the alpha here and going for like an alpha 40, which is really, really, really sharp. And it's going to give you a super straight cut. Of course, right now, the, the intensity of the... Um, I'm going to go to alpha 44. The intensity of the DynaMesh or the resolution of the DynaMesh won't allow us to have a super clean 
uh, effect. But I'm also thinking about the, the distance that we're going to be seeing this. So not too worried about that, to be honest. Let's go there, 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 and there. I'm definitely going to push this in a little bit more. And I, I kind of like the fact that like the polygons are breaking a little bit because it, it gives me this sort of uh, like splinter wood effect um, to look interesting at the end. I, like, I really like this shape that we created here. I think we just need to polish it a little bit. So this like eye shape. Now let's go back to our Kukul Khan reference and see like any other patterns or things that we might see that look interesting. For instance, you can see that as, as the spiral goes back, it has like this like divots and stuff. I think we can do that here on the on the back of the eye. So we can carve here, for instance. Create a, a little bit of a, of a carving section that goes around. Smooth this out with a with smooth brush. There we go. And now uh, the divots, they seem eh, pretty organic. So we can just kind of like go for something like this. Again, very, this is very traditional, very manual, I would say. But I think it gives this sort of a uh, a little bit more of a realistic look. I really like those feathers. Where were these ones? Were the ones that we were referencing? I, I think they might be a little bit too big, though. So I'm gonna use Trim Dynamic to to raise them a little bit, and then with Clay Build Up again, I'm gonna rebuild them. But they're gonna be like I'm. We're gonna have like three of them right here. There we go. See that. Let's do the the center ones first. And then we'll do this one. So let's make the brush a little bit smaller. For instance, here we can definitely add a little bit more. There's a project, by the way, uh, talking about like Mexican culture. There's a project that has been floating on my mind for like three years. I've been thinking about this for like three years. And I think I have the like the idea on how to solve it because it's a, it's kind of like a like a technical challenge of uh, uh, that I've thought about um because we we were given a project I'll, I'll tell you just it was just one second this is just the background um we were we were pitched a project a couple of years ago and they wanted us to do uh they wanted me to do uh something called an alebrije uh which is a mythical fantastical creature from uh, Oaxaca uh, which is a, a city in the um, a state in a city in the in the south of Mexico, and uh, they're really, really cool. If you've seen uh, Coco from uh, Pixar, uh, uh, there, there's like this huge panther flying thing. So these are alebrijes, right? And um, and when they pitched the project, I told them, yeah, we can, like, I helped them design. We did one, like, huge, uh, huge alebrije for, um, for Burning Man, actually. This was, like, three years ago. Actually, I took a photo. Give me one second. I'll show it to you. Just one second. There we go. So I went to the museum yesterday and they actually had it there. It's usually like touring uh, Mexico. So um, they they pitched the idea of having a gigantic alebrije for a Burning Man. And I was in charge of the design of the piece. So I uh, they wanted to be a, a um, saber tooth uh, tiger because on the desert, ice age, stuff like that. So they told me this and that, this body parts, this kind of stuff. So it's this. Uh, saber tooth tiger with like deer antlers, uh, um, like um, uh, bird wings, and like a shell on the top, a dragon tail. Uh, it has like buffalo uh, hoofs over here. Um, I did the design in ZBrush. I did a very basic like color uh, block out, and then the artisans actually like um, built the whole thing and they decorated it with a very cool pattern. This is where my whole story finishes or, or ends, which is called Wichol. Okay. So huicholes, they're, they're a, a specific, uh, I'm not sure if the proper translation is, um, it's a tribe, but they're a group of artisans that live uh, here in Mexico, and they create this amazing looking pieces. Look at this, super fun. So uh, what they did is they actually, 
uh, added some of these patterns throughout. So all of these things, this thing right here, the nose, like there's a lot of like Huichol patterns throughout the whole Alebrije. So it was this, this very cool like Mexican celebration thing because we had a little bit of everything. And, um, and I remember the director of the museum, he was like, hey, could you do a texture? Could you do a render so that it looks like Huichol art? Like we want to see this, like the beats of the elements, like, damn, like how are we going to solve this? Either we like model every single bead or something. And, and I've been thinking about how to do it. And I think now that I've been uh, delving a little bit into uh, Bifrost, for instance, I think it could be done with Bifrost. Because at first I thought, well, you could definitely do this beat pattern with a Substance Design, right? Like you can create a, a, a height map that just creates the beat things. Yes. But then how do you map the color to a UV texture? So at each one of them, it could probably be done on that software as well. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep uh, working on the idea. And if I can get it to work, I'll, I'll show you guys the technique. Anyway, let's go back to Seaver. Sorry for the, for the, um, what's the word? All of this uh, tangents. I mentioned that I've, uh, I've been working a lot today, so I want to use this time to relax and hopefully you guys are, are entertained and uh, learn a little bit about the, about the process over here. So there we go. We are now going to the lower lip of the, of the, of this like serpent handle. I really like how those scales look now. I might need to, like polish them uh, over here. They look kind of weak, I would say, but they're not bad. And um, and again, when you look at from from afar, it looks like like a like actual a scales. I'm I'm tempted to just like erase one of these lines, and again, kind of keep it in a in this sort of like very straight geometric pattern. I'm not going for like realism. Like I, I don't want like a like a Mayan historian to be like, oh yeah, that's like completely right i'm going more for like the the style right like the the general idea of the of the culture here i'm thinking about like a, another sort of like pattern like this like an s shape could also be interesting we can carve in a little bit here yeah just playing around with a General shapes. I like that one. I like that one. So where's Google Khan over here? There we go. Let's look for another reference. I actually uh, look for uh, like Mayan wood carving, and the, it was very flat. They use a lot of like bas relief, so this is like very uh, common to what they would normally do. It, they don't have a lot of uh, a lot of wood carvings. You can see quite simplistic, rather. Uh, they sell this kind of thing, so if you go to Chichen Itza, some of them are not, like, authentic, of course. Uh, uh, they're just, like, uh, uh, souvenirs. Uh, but you can see, again, the, the sort of, like, things and, and, and language that they went for. So down here, I think it might be a good idea to, again, have a line going to the front. I might even make this thing a little bit thinner. I think it's a little bit too, too thick. So let's thin this out. And I want this line to kind of like fade into this border right here. Okay. And we're going to fade this one on the back here, creating this sort of like U shape. We're probably going to fill this back portion with uh, scales as well. On the front, of course, we're going to use a very similar technique to what we did with the lips. Uh, let's turn off lazy mouse again so that we can increase the intensity. There we go. There we go. There we go. Dynamesh without polish. Thank you. There we go. And then this area right here, I've seen against this sort of like patterns and like feathery thingies. So we're going to start from the center and go out like this. Um, pretty much like uh, with a lot of the like uh, old civilizations and old cultures, they were very naturalistic, right? So they would uh, they would look at the at the trees, at the mountains, at the at the flowers. <coughs> My God. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. They would look at nature uh, for inspiration, and, and that's what you normally see in, in ancient civil civilization 
arts. We do that as well. We still do it, right? <laughs> oh my god. There we go. So let's have the sort of like branches and and patterns going forward. There we go. It's a little bit too detailed, I would say. As you can see here, it tends to be less detailed. It has some, oh, that's a nice snake. Uh, now let's talk about the fangs, right? Because uh, a common thing that I see a lot of people uh, struggle with. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, give me one second, guys. Oh my God, I'm not sure what ha what's happening today with allergies again, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Get a, get a power through. Anyway, so I, I was going to mention that one of the main things or one of the like common things that I see with students is they're scared of using multiple subtools. Like when they see their subtool palette and they see like 12, 20, 50, 100, they, they freak out because they think or feel, I guess, that they don't have control over everything. So they try to sculpt everything in a single section. And even though it can definitely be done, it's not recommended because you, you lose a lot of flexibility, right? So I'm going to start with a sphere right here. I'm going to do the fangs. And uh, I actually want to do a very squarish looking fangs. So let's uh, bring the head in. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to use my knife brush. Control uh, shift and I'm going to go into knife curve. So we're going to do a curve right here. And then from uh, up to down, we're going to do something like this to create this sort of like sharp, sharp section. There we go. On the front, I'm going to turn on uh, symmetry. And we're going to cut like this a little bit more. There we go. And then uh, we can just dynamesh with a really high resolution, like a thousand. And there we go. We have a, an interesting looking fang. Of course, I'm going to use uh, Trim Dynamic to bevel the edges of this fang and, and sharpen it up a little bit more. Like this. Let's go back here. And do that. There we go. Perfect. I think it's a little bit thick, so we're going to make it smaller. And there we go. Now we just position this where we need it. So we just move it into position. Probably going to make it a little bit thicker. This first one, I do want it to be like hanging out. So this what is, is going to change quite a bit. There we go. And then we're going to add a couple more. So let's do one there. Definitely make it smaller. And we do want to add like both the top and the bottom. But again, I'm not going to do this. I don't want to do extra work. So it's going to be one pointing down. And then the other one, we're going to rotate like this first, 90 degrees. And then we're going to rotate like this. Why? Because otherwise we would have gone in a different direction. And there we go. Push it in again. Control Alt, move it out again, again, uh, like that. Then first we rotate on the Y axis. Very important, the Y axis. And then we rotate on the, on the C axis. Actually, we need to rotate the other way again. It's so like this. I got myself mixed up. There we go. And this one goes up like this. Again, we just want to see the like the little, the little pointy bit right there. Perfect. And now we uh, mirror this. So C plugin and mirror, but very common mistake. When we use uh, these things and we mirror, if you didn't give them polygroups, sometimes you're not gonna get them. In this case, it works. But if it doesn't work for you, make sure to give every single piece like an auto group with polygroups and that should fix it. Now, uh, on the center, I do want to add like a tongue. So let's see if, uh, again, Kukul can start like a statue with a tongue. I'm pretty sure there is. I've seen like this one right here. Look at that <laughs> big looking tongue right there. Um, let's see if there's another one. The very famous one. This one doesn't have a tongue. As you can see, it's kind of like empty on there on the inside. But I've seen some uh, some statues that have it. Well, apparently not all of them. Maybe it's just this one. It's really weird. Okay, let's do a hollow uh, piece, uh, piece, uh, bit, piece bit. Let's do a hollow, hollow section here. So I'm going to hollow this in right there. Maybe there's, I don't know, could be anything, right? Could be like a, like a jade thing or something. Now, 
Um, since we're going for a very stylized sword, we can definitely stylize this as well. Make sure symmetry is turned on. And we can be like, hey, you know what? We're going to really push some of these things, uh, proportions, to, to get something a little bit more interesting. And that's, uh, again, perfectly, perfectly fine. This is the cool thing about designing a, a thing. Like, when you, when you design your own stuff, there's really no one that can tell you, don't do that. You can do whatever. People are not um, required to like what you do. Some of you might be like, nah, I wouldn't do that. I don't like how it looks. And, and you would be perfectly um, justified to think like that. Yeah, everyone uh, deserves an opinion. Uh, but the cool thing is that you can pretty much do what you want, right? So let's just do the skills back here. So let's start with the, with the ridges. Oh, perfect. Cool. Now, it looks good. It doesn't look great. And one of the reasons why it doesn't look great, which is, again, a very common mistake, silhouette. The silhouette of this thing is boring. Really, really, really boring. As you can see, it's just a square. It has a lot of detail inside of that shape, but it's just a square. And you always want to play with silhouette to create something that looks a little bit more interesting. And um, like old Mayans did this with their statues. With this thingies right here, look at that. It's like a like a crest, right? Like a wing thingy. So if we add that, and it's very easy to do so, we're gonna be able to create something that looks very nice. So I'm gonna start with a sphere again. Grab the sphere, make it smaller. We're gonna make it longer. Go like this. And there's actually a couple of things here. Uh, we have the deformers. For instance, we have this bent arc that we can use to uh, to bend the element. There we go. In this case, uh, that's fine. We can do something like this. And then if we want to go back, just click this little guy right here and go back to the gizmo. And we could just rotate this to the other side. If we go to the front. Because that sort of like banana shape or bean shape looks a lot more interesting than just a very basic, like a... Uh, like another basic shape, right? So we'll do something like this. We're of course gonna turn on symmetry. And let's just I can see this has like a like a group on the center. So let's go a little bit more intense on the intensity here. Same with clay buildup. Let's definitely dynamish with a really high subdivision or resolution. There we go. Even though it's a really high subdivision, again, since it's a small piece, you're not gonna like like it's not gonna hit you performance-wise. And then we can play around here, for instance, with the sort of like spiky bits. Which again, it, it would be a, a wood thing that we would be carving out from. So we can't really like add a lot of detail. It's not metal. Um, we, we also need to kind of like think about that a little bit. As you can see, we can create this very cool looking shape. Same thing on the back. Kind of like carve this down like this. Just to add some visual interest overall thing there we go it's kind of like a leaf kind of like it's kind of like a crown i think we're gonna have that one there and now uh we need to create the the rest of the of the array right so in this case i do recommend doing the following i'm gonna duplicate this and then i'm just gonna do one side i'm gonna turn off uh, symmetry of course uh, i'm gonna bring the pivot point down so press alt to unlock the pivot point so that we can work with this for instance, I, I, and I, I'm, I'm going to try to be as precise as possible on where I place them because I don't want to, I don't want to break things that we already have, right? So for instance, uh, the corners of the eyes right there look very good. I actually like the fact that it kind of like matches there. I know here it goes through like the back and everything, which is fine. Again, control alt and I rotate this around. Let's push this one back. Let's rotate around. Make it face like the like the normal of the of the character. And some of you might be worried because you're like, damn, aren't this like changes in silhouette? Like they look good, but aren't they gonna affect the retopology process if you were to retopologize this? Yes, of course they will. Of course it's gonna make the retopology some like way, way, way harder. But what do you prefer? To have a, a harder retopology or a boring, a boring piece, right? So uh, high risk, it's kinda like high risk, high reward. We wanna we want to go for something that, yes, it is going to be complicated, but uh, it's also going to be really cool. So 
So we need to, to know whether it's worth that or not. Sometimes in production, you're going to have to take a decision or make a decision and be like, hey, you know what? Like, yes, we could make this thing look cooler, but it's going to take us three or four more weeks uh, and we don't have the time. So, so we're going to have to start to, to like stop right here. And it's also a valid, uh, like a valid decision. There we go. So that would, those are going to be like the side ones. And again, uh, control W to just auto group everything. C plugin, mirror, hit OK. And there we go. And I'm going to go back to the first one to create a little bit more contrast. I'm going to make this bigger. going to be big, uh, like a big brownie thingy. There we go. And I'm going to modify this or duplicate this. Rotate this 180 degrees. So it's facing back. And it's going to be the back of the character, right? So like right about there. Now, there's a big problem, no problem. It's one of those things that are like good problems to have. We have a, a really big challenge, I would say. My, 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 my father always uh, told us that there, there are no problems, there's just challenges. You just need to, to find a way to, uh, to face them and, uh, and what's the word, and, and beat them, right? So <laughs> the challenge that we now have is we've spent... 36 minutes on this, uh, on this, uh, like, Kukul Khan head. If we want to get a great result, we're going to have to spend at least the same amount of time everywhere else. So, on the handle, on the blade, on the rocks, like, everywhere else. And this is where a lot of people, especially uh, young students, um, get really, like, frustrated with, uh, with the fact that it requires quite a bit of time to get to a really good level. Like, you cannot, unfortunately and fortunately, you cannot cheat your way um, through quality, right? Like, if you want to create something that's quality content, if you want to create quality assets and props, you need to spend time with it. Uh, for me, it gets a little bit complicated. I've mentioned this before because I need to make sure that the, that the videos here for the YouTube channel are, are entertaining. But this is a, like, this weapon, it could easily be a, a full week worth of work, like 40 hours. 40 complete hours. I even have that challenge when, when recording the, the premium courses. Um, I need to teach you guys all of the tools and necessary things as, as efficiently and as entertaining as possible without sacrificing quality. But um, I'm not sure if you guys saw the, the 3D printing course, um, the one with uh, Gavala. Um, she, wait, where is she? <laughs> Did she fail? Oh my God. Where is she? I don't know where she is. Um, but that one, that was a full character that I did, and I think it was like 15 hours. So a full body, high poly character in 15 hours was crazy, crazy, crazy. But again, I, I need to, to save time so that it's, uh, um, it's, uh, approachable to people. Because if I say, Hey, I'm going to show you how to do a character, but it's going to take me a hundred hours to do so. No one has like a hundred hours to of time to watch a tutorial. You want to watch the main things, and then you want to spend your hundred hours on your character, right? So there we go. I mean, this looks quite nice. I really like the, the result that we're getting here with the, with the character. Again, Control w there, Dynamesh. I really like this effect. And one way you can evaluate whether or not this looks cool is just do a quick BPR. And uh, if you see the groups and everything like showing nicely, then that means that we're in a, in a good position. I'm probably going to take this out into uh, like Marmoset or, or uh, Blender or, or Maya to, to do a quick render from the thumbnail. Um, but this is the same like level of detail that we're gonna eventually have to do everywhere, right? Like the whole sword should be up at least to this level. And again, if this was for production, I would definitely spend even more time with it to make sure it was as perfect as possible. But hopefully all of these tips, tricks, and uh, my little chit chat here uh, have uh, made your day a little bit better. And if you like this, please make sure to like the video, share, subscribe. We're really close to 30,000 subscribers and uh, it's all thanks to you guys. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.